Hello guys, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, so where were we in the last class? What have we done? Achha, enthalpy concept we have discussed. We have also discussed the relation of delta H in this, right? Okay, got it. Yeah, one assignment I sent you, no? Last time I uh, told this on the group that you have to do that assignment. Yeah, it is due, so you obviously you need to do it. The assignment is there for you only. How many of you have done the assignment? Yes, tell me. Advik has done. Acha, Gayatri uploaded. Okay. Okay, so I saw a few names only, Gayatri, Pranav, Advik. What about others? Tell me, have you submitted the assignment? How many of you? Abhinav, what about you? Have you done? See, I need to submit it today, okay, from my side in the class pro. If you want me to, okay, if you want me to wait for a day, I can do that. Tell me. Only one day extension I can give. Fine, okay. We'll submit it today itself. If you're not responding, I'll submit it from my side. Fine, okay. So I think last class we uh, had discussed about <coughs> degree of freedom. We had discussed about enthalpy. Uh, we have seen the <coughs> concept of CPCV formula also we have seen. Right. Uh, first law of thermodynamics also have we discussed, no? First law of thermodynamics, tell me. Okay, correct. Yeah. Next, write down. All of you write down the heading. Calculation of work done.
calculation of work done. Okay, I'll just take one, uh, like 30 seconds of you. So I forgot to <coughs> finish one thing. Let me just do it. Just 30 seconds I would take. Once again, Madhav, just give me 30 seconds and let me finish one thing. Okay, so this. Yeah, I'm done. Let's start. Yes, mother, tell me what is your doubt? Achha, positive delta NGRT. Okay, one small uh, doubt uh, we have, guys. Just let's address it first and then we'll start with it. Okay. No, actually, the formula is this delta H is equals to delta U plus delta NGRT. This is the formula we have. <coughs> Correct. PDV is equals to PDV is equals to delta n g r t v p v is equals to n r t p delta v i should write p delta v is equals to delta n g r t okay now when this delta n g is negative then we'll have a negative sign over here Yeah, so P delta V we have. Oh, so you're talking about why, why won't we take minus W over there? Yes. Just one second. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I, I got a call. Yeah, fine. Yeah, so your doubt is uh, delta ng when negative. Okay. Okay, I, I think so you're saying we have done delta h is equals to delta u plus uh, p delta v, we write, uh, plus work done, we write. This is what you are thinking, I guess. And then this delta w should be minus p delta v, isn't it? That's what you're saying. And we should write P delta V as minus delta NGRT. So we should have delta U minus delta NGRT. This is what you're saying, right? Ha, huh, you got your point. Okay, see, actually, it is the mathematical definition of enthalpy. Okay, I think you got confused because last class also we were talking about uh, work done over here. See, the Mathematical definition of H is what? If you remember, I said last class that mathematical definition of H is H is equals to U plus PV work done. This is the mathematical definition of e, H. We don't talk about work done here by the gas or on the gas. This is the expression. We don't write here W. This is not the expression. 
but the expression is this mathematical expression at constant pressure the enthalpy of the system is given by h is equals to u plus p into v plus p into v worked up this is the mathematical definition and hence we have delta h equals to delta u plus p delta v well, after this you know what is the expression we are going to have so don't get confused over here that instead of pv we have worked on w but it is h is equals to u plus pv understood this point so slight change we have over here not work done if you think about why we get confused because we write here since we know pv is work done so it is work done so it should be minus p delta we know it's not like that it's h is equals to u plus pv and hence we have the formula i hope it is clear now okay shall we start now correct yeah okay so um, we are going to understand today i'll start study about uh work done in various processes okay work done in various processes mainly we are going to deal with isothermal and adiabatic process correct isothermal and adiabatic process we are going to deal with so write down we are considering expansion over here so expansion means work done by the system that also you know already okay so let me write down the heading first the heading is write down calculation of work done and then the first point in under this write down in isothermal expansion in isothermal expansion <clears throat> yeah. acha bhai what and what happened bhai is it fine now guys can you see the screen okay it's fine yeah okay it's fine i think the screen was frozen for a while that's why i asked no problem he's known it's fine now isothermal expansion means what we have expansion but the temperature of the system is constant right so constant temperature expansion at constant temperature so what happens in this process you see <clears throat> you have a system and we need to focus on the work done over here right work done in isothermal expansion <clears throat> so what happens this system will or can do work in two different way one is it can do work at the cost of its own energy in general if you talk about at the cost of its own energy or it can take heat from the surroundings plus q and it can do work with this particular heat w correct but if it does work at the cost of its own internal energy then obviously its temperature will change correct so here work done at the cost of the internal energy of system is not possible right because internal energy decreases so temperature also decreases so we are not considering the uh, you know the the first factor here which is which is work done by the system at the cost of its own internal energy correct so what is happening here here we are assuming 
isothermal expansion and it is possible that the system will take some energy from outside and it does work with that particular energy but we need to understand here since the process is isothermal so what is the value of delta u anybody isothermal process delta u delta u is zero why because internal energy is a function of only temperature okay only temperature so if temperature is constant delta u is zero so we need to maintain this condition since the process is isothermal so we need to maintain this condition delta u is equals to zero we need to maintain means whatever energy it takes in whatever process is happening here you should not change right agree yeah so what should be you know the the process here so that the internal energy won't change it is possible that suppose if 10 joule of heat this system absorbs from the surroundings and equal amount of work it has to done yes or no then only there is no net heat gain by the system and there is no change in internal energy are you getting it right see guys this chapter is 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 entirely concept okay you can have any situation in the in the question right we are trying to understand all those possible situations here in the session right but you need to think you need to think about the on the given condition what is the condition given what are the possibilities we have okay now since we are assuming isothermal here so obviously the amount of heat it gains equal amount of work it has to do then only the internal energy will be constant that is the condition we have over here so heat in is equals to heat out basically so if you use first law of thermodynamics also which is delta u is equals to what q plus w but this delta u is zero so what is plus q plus q is equals to minus w is this correct respond guys is this correct do we have other possibilities do we have other possibilities can we say this can we say this also that minus q is equals to plus w can we say this remember this kind of discussion we had in the conclusion of thermo sorry first law of thermodynamics if you remember right this is also possible because delta u is what delta u is zero so what is the meaning of this if i ask you to write down this mathematical expression in sentence in language what will you write you will write what heat absorbs by the system that is plus q is equals to work done what work done by the system or on the system by the system right yes so what we can write here it means heat absorbs by the system and work done on the system so it is a mathematical expression mathematical relation here that is what i was discussing over here theoretically few minutes back if you try to understand this right other way is also possible suppose you are doing some work on the system you are you are doing some work on the system suppose so you are in, you are trying to increase the internal energy of the system right if you does some work on the system its energy will increase right but the condition is what isothermal so to maintain this u delta u is equals to 0 it has to release the equal amount of energy the amount of work done on the system equal amount of energy it has to release yes or no then only the internal energy will be constant correct yeah that is the second expression we have here work done on the system equals to what heat released by the system i hope it is clear now right so this kind of understanding not it's not tough only you need to sit back and think of it about it right you will understand this because they can give you any numerical any theoretical questions on this that what are the possibilities we have and for this delta u to be zero what are the various possibilities a b c d four options they'll give you so you need to think all these aspects here uh physical condition for maintaining the isothermal condition uh, it's practically it is difficult physical condition if you ask me uh, then it is it is almost impossible 
because we don't have any ideal condition or we cannot do this uh, we can say that the change is less that is possible right but it is difficult whenever the system gains or releases heat its internal energy always changes to a small extent or large extent that's a different debate but internal energy definitely will change okay now this is one thing now one more relation we are going to understand over here see we have discussed the relation of enthalpy h is equals to u plus pv this is the mathematical definition of enthalpy we have correct so delta h is equals to delta u delta u plus plus we can write delta nrt delta nrt we are considering the same number of moles temperature is changing over here we are considering right if sorry, delta t won't be zero here for the same number of moles this term will be zero because it is isothermal process delta t is zero if same number of moles for a process we are talking about right for a gases process we are talking about we don't have the reaction over here so this entire term will be zero here because n is also constant t is also constant it is zero delta u is already zero so delta h is also zero in this case so isothermal process you can think of that enthalpy change in enthalpy and internal energy is zero ngrt we have will use when we have chemical reaction given always remember guys always delta h is equals to delta u is equals to delta ngrt will use when the chemical reaction is given otherwise we won't use it okay always so this is the condition of isothermal process we have now you see because the heading is about work done so work done how do we do calculate so we are assuming here under isothermal expansion i am assuming irreversible process you see all this discussion is based upon the assumption that we are doing right so i am assuming irreversible process correct irreversible process means what could you tell me irreversible process it changes suddenly constant yeah that's what i wanted to know constant external pressure right so we are talking about expansion here right yeah that's also correct changes suddenly we are talking about expansion and always keep that in mind whenever you have expansion it means work done by the system work done by the system it is expansion the case of expansion is work done by the system correct now expansion also we have of two types of two types one is one is free expansion one is free expansion and other one is intermediate expansion okay do you guys experiencing any lag from my side pranav you can do one thing you can rejoin yeah others are fine i think pranav you can you join rejoin once acha okay your internet correct <clears throat> correct done intermediate what is free expansion free expansion is very simple free expansion is like for example expansion in vacuum expansion in vacuum is this the correct spelling of vacuum or double c double u m which one is correct
single C and W. See, I'm getting many options here. V A C W M or this one. All three we have. Is it V A C W M? अच्छा माधव इस गूगल इट अच्छा ओके ठीक है V A C W M ठीक है this is spelling is right this, this you know when you write some exams like upsc and all right so there we have a general knowledge section like for english also we have a section over there so in that they'll ask you which one of the spelling is correct so they'll ask you this kind of uh, words over there like where the you know it's is confusion is there like with with with, with most of the students like double c single u or single c double u or it's like this okay so that's what i recall uh upsc and all if you try to write uh, you know upsc exam any government service exam if you prepare like yeah upsc is uh, madhav upsc is yeah ias ips and all if you want to become a premier officer in government uh, thing you have to write these kind of exams right so that's all very tough very tough so this is so this is also one of the section we have so single c and w this is confirmed expansion in vacuum coming back to our portion here expansion in vacuum so vacuum you see there is no pressure correct so there is no pressure so p external is zero so free expansion you can understand when there is no external pressure simply the expansion is taking place without any external pressure right so free expansion in vacuum obviously work done in this case is what work done is zero because p external is only zero so work done is also zero yes so you you just need to know this what is free expansion obviously there is no question they going to ask on you because work done is zero now intermediate expansion is expansion against whatever volume it is uh, whatever whatever volume you will expand till infinity no if there is no external pressure zero pressure then you will expand till infinity right and p external is zero so whatever volume you have it is zero only correct so it is like you know practically it's not possible ha huh? if you become a scientist and if you go to the uh, you know in the universe then you can have this kind of case so intermediate expansion is expansion against expansion against a given external pressure the given external pressure whatever it is 5 atmospheric 10 atmospheric whatever it is a given external pressure we have expansion correct this is intermediate expansion it's, it's a normal case that we have correct and in this case what is the work done dw is equals to minus integral of p external dv is it fine v1 to v2 because work done formula is always minus p external into dv can we further simplify it w is equals to what we can write minus p external we can write it outside because p external is constant since the process is irreversible i am assuming right p external delta v which is v2 minus v1 so this is the expression of work done in irreversible expansion correct no doubt yeah so this is very simple case we have if you get it you just find out pdv and you can get the answer now the case is that we had discussed it once you know the concept behind this what to do and what not to do before going that just write down one note over here
write down in case of intermediate in case of intermediate irreversible isothermal expansion in case of intermediate irreversible isothermal expansion isothermal expansion we will have maximum work done we will have maximum work done we will have maximum work done when the external pressure equals to the pressure of gas so basically the condition of maximum work done is p external is equals to p gas right because if you want further expansion then p external you need to decrease then only the expansion takes place right when p external decreases work done will also be less because work done is equals to p external dv just one condition here now <clears throat> the next is second case you write down we have reversible process that is isothermal isothermal reversible i have given you the idea of it how to derive work done in this case so since it is a reversible process so p external is what is not constant and work done dw is equals to we can write minus p external into dv integral correct so when you integrate it for a given limit v1 to v2 and this is 0 to w so work done w is equals to you'll get minus of integration p external we can write n r t by v into dv right we cannot take p external outside of the integral side because this is not constant here v1 to v2 so when you integrate it the expression will be minus 2.303 n r t log of v2 by v1 i hope you have done little bit of int integration till now so you will be understanding it yes any doubt in this expression in the derivation just let me know acha one more thing can we express this work done in terms of pressure can we do that yes how do we do that can we express this expression of work done in terms of pressure yeah very good so depending upon the situation given in the question or data given in the question we can do this because a process is still isothermal so we can always write p1 v1 is equals to p2 v2 so what is v2 by v1 v2 by v1 is p1 by p2 so instead of v2 by v1 we can also write down here a oh, one second mother one second instead of v2 by v1 we can also write down p1 by p2 so expression for work done would be for w for reversible isothermal process isothermal is equals to minus 2.303 nrt log of 
पी वन बाय वन सेकेंड वादव आई एल जस्ट टेक यू डाउट जस्ट से Ha ah, yes you must be getting this kind of questions Hold on हाँ दैट इज तो वी हैव डिस्कस नो अंडर आइसोथर्मल प्रोसेस माधव वी कैन हैव ओनली टू पॉसिबिलिटीज आइदर प्लस क्यू इज इक्वल्स टू माइनस डब्ल्यू और माइनस डब्ल्यू इज इक्वल्स टू प्लस क्यू और प्लस डब्ल्यू इज इक्वल्स टू माइनस क्यू दैट इज द पॉसिबल फॉर आइसोथर्मल सिस्टम सो इट इज पॉसिबल हियर ऑल्सो क्लियर Irreversible process we have discussed no Madhav just before this we have discussed irreversible p external dv non reversible is irreversible I guess we are talking about yeah obviously irreversible and and uh, reversible that is it okay now why it is two point three zero three it is coming over here. because this is the basic information if you have a dx by x ka integration if you are doing you'll getting ln x here ln x right dx by x is ln x ln if you want to convert into log it is 2.303 log x so it is basically ln to log conversion so we can write ln a is equals to 2.303 log a clear mother that's why we have this 2.303 log means base 10 ln means base e if it is not mentioned yes log value i'll tell you what you need to remember okay i'll tell you this will use this in Ionic equilibrium. So in that, uh, you know, chapter I'll let you know. Like log two, log three, and log five. These three values you must remember. Okay, log two is point three zero. Log three is I'll tell you. Log three is point four eight. Log five is point six nine exactly. Roughly we use it at point seven zero also. So in here is it is not required, right? But mainly we use this in ionic equilibrium where we have to calculate pH. Correct. If you want, you can write down approximate value. I'm giving you log two is zero point three zero. Log three is zero point four eight approximately. Log five is zero point seven zero. I'm giving you approx value. Exact value of log five is zero point six nine seven something around. So roughly, we use this point seven zero just for calculation. So this three value at least you must remember. Okay, now if you know these two value, you can find out log six ka value. You can find out log four ka value. You can find out log fifteen uh, ka value. Many values you can find out. Okay. So I hope all of you have understood the expression of. Work done in reversible isothermal and irreversible isothermal process. Correct. Okay. Now adiabatic process we need to see. Write down the heading.
we have adiabatic expansion. Adiabatic expansion. Adiabatic expansion means what? Heat exchange is zero. Adiabatic expansion, heat exchange is zero. From first law of thermodynamics, what we can write? Delta U is equals to W. Okay. Delta U is equals to W. Correct. Now, what do you mean by this? If you try to analyze the entire process over here, how it goes, you have a system, right? We are assuming adiabatic expansion. So it cannot exchange heat from surroundings. Neither it give it can give heat to the surrounding nor it can accept heat from surrounding. Right? No exchange of energy between system and surrounding because it is adiabatic. So if the system is doing some work, right? If the system is doing some work, then it has to do work at the cost of its own internal energy. Correct? Yeah, one second, Pranav, I'll go back. Guys, just a second. This page. Yeah. See, this notation means work done in reversible isothermal process. Okay. So this is the situation we have. There's no exchange of energy. Q is zero here. Right, there's no exchange of energy here. So if the work done by the system, work done by the system. So we have only two possibilities. Either system will do work or work done on the system. This is the only two possibility we have, correct? So when we have worked in by the, by the system, so system is doing work. So it is, you no, know, it is utilizing its energy, correct? And it cannot take energy from any other source, right? So obviously worked in by the system, we have minus W and the internal energy of the system will decrease in this case, right? So Delta U is what? Is equals to Delta U we can write? Minus W is equals to delta U. Because work done by the system equals to change in internal energy. This means what? Delta U is negative, which means internal energy decreases. And that is what the meaning also we have here. System is doing work at the cost of its own energy. So obviously the energy of the system will decrease and that is what we are getting. If you have work done on the system, so it is plus W is equals to delta U, which means what? The value of delta U is greater than zero, positive. So delta U is positive. So internal energy increases. So obviously you're doing work on the system. So internal energy increases. So take care of this thing here, that internal energy, when it is adiabatic process also, then also it may increase or decrease. Don't think like this, that since the process is adiabatic, it cannot exchange energy with surrounding. So its internal energy won't change. Obviously energy exchange is not possible simply, but we can do some work on the system, right? And in that way only, the internal energy may change. 
either we can do work on the system or the system does work on surroundings. Okay, fine. Now we have to understand the work done expression here. So you see what, how do we do this? We have delta U is equals to W, which means DU is equals to W, which further means W is equals to CV delta T. If you remember the expression of DU, what is the expression of DU? We know DU is equals to NCV DT applicable for all processes, whether the volume is constant or not. Correct. So for one mole, we can write down this expression. Right. So what is the expression further we have? W is equals to CV T2 minus T1. This is the expression of work done. Expression is this only, but we can simplify this. How I'll tell you. Okay. We can simplify this. How I'll tell you. Okay. This is one expression. If you memorize this, you can, you know, do the simplification on your own in the exam also, and you can get the answer. So it's not like you have to memorize the final expression. If you memorize, then probably you won't be able to get it. If you forget that particular expression in the exam. Second part of the last page. Last page, should I go back? Achha, okay. Which one? This one? Yeah? Yes. It's simple, no. See, only two possibilities we have, either work done on the system or by the system. So by the system is the previous one. And just opposite we have on the system. So if you're doing work on the system, right, then obviously work done will be positive. So the plus W is equals to delta U. This means what? The value of delta U is positive. So positive delta U means internal energy is increasing or has been, or has been increased. That's what we said. Clear? Tell me, mother, any doubt? No, we are not talking about here reversible, irreversible. It is simply an adiabatic expansion. See, we don't have uh, such case over here. We don't have such case over here because adiabatic expansion is not because of decrease in the external pressure, right? In adiabatic process, we can have work done on the system or by the system. Correct. So we calculate work done with respect to change in internal energy. It's not pressure volume work done we have, which is possible. It's not like which is not possible. Obviously we can have expansion or contraction. That's one case, but work done we are calculating because of the, with respect to the change in internal energy. That's what the expression we have, you see, W and delta U. And in case of a calculation of delta U, we are not considering any process here, reversible or irreversible. We are not considering external pressure, constant or not. Right? So if you consider this is reversible adiabatic, then what happens? We'll see that. Okay, we'll discuss that. But till now, we are not considering. Yeah. So we have this CV T2 minus T1. I would request that you should memorize this formula. Other thing you can simplify. Now you see how do we do the simplification here? What I am doing, 
I am multiplying by R gas constant and we have Cv by R T2 minus T1. I want you to tell me one thing over here. What is the value of Cv by R in terms of gamma? Cv by R in terms of gamma. Yeah, that wala gamma. Yes. Cp by Cv is equals to gamma. That gamma I want you to use over here. One by gamma minus one, correct? Okay. So we are having here. How do we do this? Acha guys. Okay, fine. I'll do this way. I asked you to find out uh, the value of CV by R in terms of gamma. This value I've asked you to find out in terms of gamma, right? So how do we do this? You see, we know we have two relation. One is CP minus CV. Is equals to R, and other one is Cp by Cb is equals to gamma. This we know. So what I'll do, I'll multiply, I divide here by Cb in order to get gamma. Simple, you see. So what we get here from this expression, Cp by Cb is gamma. Gamma minus one is equals to R by Cb. So Cb by R is what? Cv by R is one by gamma minus one, so that value I'll replace here. I'll substitute here. So we get here R T two minus T one divided by gamma minus one. Okay. Further, you see what we can do. We can write W is equals to R T two. Minus R T one by gamma minus one. So for ideal gas equation, what we can write R T two is equals to P two V two. R T one is equals to P one V one. This is the expression we have. Final expression is this. You can see the simplification here. We are using. Cv delta T to find out this. End out. No. Okay. Very important relation. Okay. Now you see, we have written the expression of work done in adiabatic process. Cv dt right. 
the general expression of work done we have that is cvdt we are getting from for adiabatic process this we can always equate to minus p dv isn't it p external right no doubt no because work done is always this this is work done that's what we have seen so far this comes because of adiabatic process so we are equating that to correct now i am you know putting a condition over here condition is what the reversible adiabatic expansion i am considering reversible adiabatic expansion expansion correct p external is not constant so if you try to find out this what we'll write cv dt is equals to minus p external dv and integration of it correct any doubt if you understood this after this we have simplification again any doubt guys any one of you no doubt correct cv is a constant obviously so cv i'll take outside dt i'll write as it is p we cannot take out because it is reversible so it is r t by v for one mole so for n is equals to 1 so i want you to solve this integration dt by t is equals to minus r dv by v see what happens here r by cv is again gamma minus 1 correct so we'll have here ln t t1 to t2 is equals to minus r by cv ln v v1 to v2 correct so we get here ln t2 by t1 is equals to minus r by cv is what just now we did this uh gamma minus 1 is r by cv so it is 1 minus gamma ln v2 by v1 so further we can write this as t2 by t1 is equals to v2 by v1 to the power 1 minus gamma correct which further it becomes t2 by t1 is equals to v1 by v2 to the power gamma minus 1 which we can write t2 v2 to the power gamma minus 1 is equals to t1 v1 to the power gamma minus 1 which in turn we can always write this as t v to the power gamma minus 1 is equals to 
constant. Tell me, how many of you understood this? Guys, this is not the formula of work done, first of all. It is a condition of adiabatic process. Like if somebody asks you, what is the condition of temperature and volume for the process to be an adiabatic process? Your answer would be, the relation of T and V should be this. TV to the power gamma minus one is equal to cos. Very, very important reduction. Relation. I'll explain it. See what happens here. These are just log properties. What log properties I'm using here, you see. If you have A log B or ln B, log or ln properties are same only, okay. So A log B in terms of properties, you can consider this as A ln B also. So A log B, we can always write log B to the power A. This is one of the log properties. Clear? So this property I have used over here. This was A, this was B. So I have written log B to the power A. This one minus gamma comes over here in the power. So actually we have this expression, ln and ln here, which gets cancelled. So we are left with this. Clear? Clear? So TV to the power gamma constant. It's not like guys, key, we can always write down the relation with respect to temperature and volume. Correct? We can always convert this into pressure volume relation also. How you see this? All the three relations are very important. We got this expression TV to the power gamma minus one is equals to constant. If you want to get the expression in terms of pressure and volume, then we can use this relation PV is equals to NRT, right? So if you want to replace temperature in terms of, if you want to get the relation in terms of pressure and volume, then T will write down as PV. Means T equals to what? PV by NR. NR is a constant only. We'll substitute it here. So we'll get P into V to the power V gamma minus one equals to a constant, a new constant will get here. So further it becomes PV to the power gamma constant. So this relation is again for adiabatic process, condition of adiabatic process. Now, could you tell me what is the relation of adiabatic process we have in terms of pressure and temperature? In terms of pressure and temperature.
Okay. So we get here. Now volume will replace in terms of temperature and pressure. So we have pressure already. Volume is T by P to the power gamma is equals to constant. So we'll write P to the power one minus gamma T to the power gamma equals to constant. Sometimes we also write this as this expression P T to the power gamma divided by one minus gamma equals to constant. This also sometimes they give. Or other way also, they also can write. They can also give you t to the power 1 minus gamma by gamma. This one. All are correct. All the three expressions are correct. No doubt. Okay. So any of the three expression, they can ask you in the exam. I would suggest this, the middle one is the most important one. Okay. You keep this in mind. And if you need to express the relation in terms of temperature and pressure, you can change this with the help of PV is goes to NRT. Or in this, with the help of PV is goes to NRT. Now, this we discussed for, this is only for reversible adiabatic process. Keep that in mind. Okay. This is only for reversible adiabatic process because that is a condition we have applied over here. You see? If it is reversible, then only we can keep this under the integral sign. So the expression that we get is for reversible adiabatic process. Correct. If it is irreversible, then what happens? Then we have already done it. If it is irreversible, this P external will be outside. Again, the formula would be V2 minus V1. No doubt. Okay. A child do it for irreversible also. Irreversible, you don't have to do anything basically. Irreversible. Adiabatic expansion. So work done is equals to minus P external V2 minus V1. Okay. Which is also equals to CV T2 minus T1. This is the expression of work done we have. Now we can, you can put this in different, different way. Formalize this only. See here, work done is P external. V2 we can write what? V2 we can write R T2 by P2 minus R T1 by P1. For one mole, I'm writing it down. For one mole, 
where P1 and P2 are the pressure of gases at two different times. So further, this becomes what? P external into R T2 by P2 minus T1 by P1. Clear? Yeah. Now, next. So, what have we done so far? We have done isothermal process and for isothermal process we have seen that PV is equals to constant. We have done adiabatic process and what is the condition for adiabatic process? Delta Q is zero we know. Apart from this we can also write PV to the power gamma is equals to constant, isn't it? Yes. Can we say the gamma value is always greater than one? Is it? Gamma value is always greater than one? Yes. For mono atomic, what is the value of gamma? <clears throat> yes. For diatomic, it is 1.4440. For polyatomic, it is 1.33. Monoatomic is 1.66. You need to memorize these values. Okay. Diatomic is 1.40. Polyatomic is 1.33. Previous slide. Okay. I'll go back. One second, guys. Yeah, done. See, uh, I have done this values Himanshu in the last class. You must have written in your notes. Okay. I'll write down here also again, but keep that in mind. Okay. We have a monoatomic gas. So for monoatomic gas, the gamma value is 1.66. We have diatomic gas, gamma value is 1.40. Polyatomic, 1.33. Must take care of one thing, polyatomic non-linear. I have discussed all these things last class. Yes or no, guys? Our concern here is, that this gamma is more than one. So you see what we can say here. Now understand it properly. Uh, the power of V in isothermal process is lesser than to that of in adiabatic process. Can we say that? Power of V in isothermal process is lesser than to that of, again, V in adiabatic process, right? Gamma is more than one. Okay, that is the one thing. On the basis of this, we'll do the graph comparison. Okay. Just a second. 